Hey everyone, welcome back. Before we go on, you can find the resources I'm using in the description section below this video. In the previous video, we completed the documentation for our API. Now, before we write unit tests for our application, our API is incomplete. If we run our application, we've been interacting with um, our API by manually uploading our photos using this post method over here. However, a web API doesn't interact with end users directly. A web API communicates with client applications by sending and receiving binary JSON or XML data to and from mobile or web applications directly. In its current state, the web API we've built cannot process images from client applications. So let us add that functionality. Back in the API projects, let us add a new DDO class and let's call it car create model. And in this class, we're going to add four properties to it. Here they are. So we add the user ID, name, file name, image. So all we need to do here is resolve the namespace. The namespace. Save this now in the cars controller. Let me quickly collapse this to definition. Let's find our existing post method. It is Let's copy this method and right above it, let us paste it. Okay, now here let us change the parameter we're accepting to the new object we've just created. Car create model. Car create model. Copy this car create model. Move the bits we don't need. Let's delete these four lines of code. And of course, now we change the parameters. Okay, so this will be file name and memory stream to array becomes a car upload model image byte okay next let us just make this car create model after i file name and so that is it for the functionality to enable our api accept car create model from client application so Back into Swagger, let us refresh this. And, oh, we have a problem. Let's see what the problem is. Let's open our browser dev tools. And up here, which really says there's one error. Let's click on that error. It says, failed to load resource. The server responded with a status of 500. So let us click on that JSON. Okay, here we go. Not supported exception. This is just basically Postman's way of telling us you can't have two post methods with the same method signature. We have a post here, the one we just added, and the initial post method. And as you can see here, we have two methods with the same signature. Now, to resolve that, in the initial post method, let us reroute it to a new URL. Let's call it upload. Okay. So once we do that, let's hit save. Back in our browser, let's refresh this. And there we go. We have our new post method that will take a car create payload from our client applications. Okay, and here is our new car create payload with its properties right here. As you can see, we can't interact with this post method, but if we wanted to test our API, we can go to the car upload and just try it out like we've been doing so far. Okay, back in Visual Studio, let us now prep our API for unit testing there's a few changes we need to make first of all uh, i options monitor does not have extension methods that we can tap into while writing unit tests so let's go ahead and change this to i options same thing here we make this i options and over in the car create car model instead of current value let's change this and make it the value all right next we make these methods public right and the same as the set memory cache entry options now the moment we make methods public in a, con a controller swagger will complain that this is not an action method so let's say api settings let's tell it to ignore this particular method by saying AP api settings ignore api true same thing goes for up here let's say api ignore settings and let's say true this is a way to control 
which methods can be revealed to Swagger. Same thing, if we don't want this second post method that we've been using manually to be revealed, we can say API settings, so ignore API, set it to true. And that should go ahead and hide these methods from our documentation. If we hit refresh and watch down here, this method should be hidden from us now. And there we go. But for now, let's just leave it as it is. Let it be revealed because we'll use it later in another series or in another demo. Okay, next in our data folder, let's look at the DB initializer. Let's modify this class to accept a car array cars and let's set it now this is just a good way of saying this parameter is optional okay so down here just uh, we now gonna wrap this call to initialize car just collapse this let's collapse this all right now we can go ahead and wrap this call in an if statement and say if cars cars is null okay so this now becomes cars once we do this our method should be okay so let me just fix the formatting sorry excuse me here let's fix this until uh, there tap this one more and yes that looks good let's save this now we are ready to write unit test but before we write unit test we must check for package updates it's been a while since i started this project and there we go we've had several visual studio updates so we need to update our our framework packages there we go let's accept the terms and conditions Okay, well that's going on I'm just gonna close all these documents okay so that looks done so here we need to refresh our application to just make sure everything is running okay because at this stage whenever you update packages sometimes a break can occur and our application still runs as expected now we can go ahead and add a new project and next let's select unit test project let's call it api test and we say we add to the solution and say create let's give it a moment to update the dependencies Okay, that's look good, looking good. Um, let's go to NuGet packages once again, and in here we need to update packages. Usually, when you add such projects, it's always best to update the packages. Okay. Great, that's done. Now let us add Microsoft Entity Framework Core in memory SQL uh, in memory database that we'll use for testing our methods in the API controller. Fine, that's done. Now I'm gonna add folders to match our API. So we're gonna have the data folder. So that's not what I wanna do. Let's add the photos folder. And let's add controllers folder. Now in the photos folder i'm just going to add existing um, photos that we have here from our api so let's just copy four folders i'm going to copy this and paste them in the photos folder then we can rename we can rename these photos okay so let's just rename them so this will come car test second one will be car one third one that will be car two and car three next in the data folder 
we're going to create tests for cache key and db initializer because these are classes we wrote ourselves they were not framework related and the way i like testing my um, mvc related uh, code is only test the code that i've written okay so let's add taste uh, class call it um, db db initializer sorry that's the wrong one it's supposed to be db initializer test so let's rename this to be db initializer tests okay next we're gonna add cache key tests and in the controllers folder we're gonna have two tests we're gonna we do have an images controller so we say images controller tests and we have a cars controller so we need a cars controller tests all right that looks cool so in the db starting with the db initializer test let's start with this one here so the first thing we're going to do is make this class uh public and up here of course this becomes test method let's bring in the namespace righty next up this will be our test class Oops, it's the other way around not test method but test class excuse me this now becomes test method so this method we will say public async task bring in the namespace db initializer should seed database okay before we write some code okay let's just close all others but this and let's just open our db initializer class and let me see if i can just split this two together and yeah so this is the class that we're testing so first let's create a new variable okay so we say car db okay this let's add a reference to our web api okay great car db context options say new db options builder car db use in memory database next let's create a new variable let's call it test test cars is new car array car array let's bring this now we say using var db is new car db configure context options so now we can call this class over here db initialize okay db initializer dot initialize and pass in our test cars and of course let's see cars the problem test cars that problem here oh yes we need to parse the db variable okay so we say cars is await db cars to array async now we are set is not now and we parse in the cars and we set our equal test cars length cars length so once we do that that is how we're gonna let me just close this so that we clearly see what's going on okay so here's our test class and the test method okay so once we do that all we need to do is just build our applications so that the uh, the test host uh, can pick up the test methods that we have okay on there we go our test is passing okay let's stop here in the next part we shall complete all the test classes we've just created if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and click in the bell icon to get notified way and when i upload a new video
Also, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.